This is the European edition of Breaking Banks, the world's number one fintech podcast and radio show. We bring you the European unicorn startups, founders, regulators and leaders innovating the rapidly evolving fintech scene today. A truly localized podcast with both English and local language content with some of the world's most well-known hosts and influencers in the fintech sector globally. Join us every week as we explore what makes the European Union a phenomenal proving ground for many of the fastest growing fintech plays in the world today. Okay, let's roll. Hello, everybody, and welcome to another episode of Breaking Bank Europe. Today's episode is number 216. Oh my God, we are doing one after the other. We are a factory in uh, producing episodes. My name is Roberto Capodice. I'm your host today. And we have uh, an exceptional guest. Is uh, Alex Bischoff, if I said it correctly. <laughs> I apologize if I didn't. It's Welcome okay, okay. to Breaking Back Europe, Alex. Yes. Hello, hello, hello from Singapore. It's uh, nice weather here. I don't know where are you now, but yeah. <laughs> Uh, it's pretty sunny. All right. Well, you know, um, today's topic is a very interesting one. We're talking about bridging the world of crypto with the world of traditional finance. It's a very delicate topic. Uh, Alex is one of the players in the world. Uh, is a CEO of a company called Embly that uh, allow people to spend crypto with uh, a sort of an ATM card, like a debit card. Exactly. Uh, but uh, let's go a little bit uh, in detail. I would like to give uh, a very high level of review for people that don't really know how the mechanics are. How does it work? First, uh, the use, right? So a lot of people play with crypto, but they have a hard time spending it. So there will come your uh, intention to do something like this. Tell us about this for a moment. Yeah, so uh, basically, uh, Embele is a bridge uh, from crypto to fiat. So people who obtain an Embele card, they, ha they have uh, actual plastic or virtual card. They, they can move uh, use it everywhere where Visa or MasterCard uh, can be used. I mean, like any terminal, any like, you know, online shop or wherever. So basically, you have your dashboard where you can choose which uh, crypto you want to use. So you choose like Ethereum, Bitcoin, or like USDT, which is more easier. And then you send this to the dedicated address, which is in your dashboard. And then uh, uh, the crypto is liquidated into the euro. And then you go and spend this euro to buy coffee, I don't know, like uh, iPhone or wherever you All want, right. like <laughs> course for your lady. I don't know. Okay, and yeah, so, yeah, so ba basically, it's it's very easy. It's it's very easy uh, bridge, but uh, of course, there are a lot of uh, a, a lot of questions uh, from regulators, from uh, like authorities. Yeah. In fact, that's what I want to explore with you is this because to the user side, it's something simple. I have my crypto, I deposit, uh, I use my card, like I use any bank card usually to go and pay for things. On the other hand, there is an history of. Uh, you know, no very good relationship between these two planets. So being in the middle of it must be a hard job. And uh, in fact, uh, I had also other friends uh, always in Singapore because it seems to be a very easy country to, uh, at least between the country, one that made it easier to to put together these two worlds. Uh, that uh, at the end they before, failed. Before, so before. right now it's right now it's very hard for Singapore. Uh, and that's what is is because it's a new area and they keep changing uh, on both sides. The keep that are things that change on the finance side, on the crypto side. So it is uh, it is a very hard game. Also to try to respect what the laws are, what the regulators want. This is the the big challenge. So for what it seems so obvious and simple on the user side, there is a very complex and sometimes impossible kind of set of tasks to do on the other side, right? So just to, to give an idea to the public, uh, the actor included in all these processes are uh, obviously a bank where you want people to be able to spend the money from or deposit money. Yes. Then you have uh, 
uh, the the card issuer usually is a company that stays between uh, Mastercard Visa and the final uh, uh, yes. company that provide the card. So there is a, a company in between. There is the one that is more under the scrutiny of Visa and Mastercard. So there is a, a strange need to respect uh, regulation and uh, uh, also requirement. Uh, of these companies and also being on the hand of this company because if this company get blocked by Visa Mastercard, everybody that uh, is working with this company suddenly stop working. And this happened to a friend of mine that was doing a similar service also in Singapore time ago. And it was hard to recover and find another company able to do that, right? And on the other exactly. side, uh, there is all the anti-money laundry, the KYC aspect that need to be done. And when it comes to crypto, is uh, and, you know, in charter territory. Yeah, no, no. <laughs> so tell us a little bit about all the mechanics for a simple loop from depositing money to spending money. What goes in the between? What happened behind the scene? Which are the limits that there are in these things? Yes. So uh, let's start from the very beginning. Uh, you want to have uh, something uh, to spend your crypto. Like uh, this is how the company actually started. Embly because I was in Thailand and I was not able to spend my Bitcoin at that time. It was 2017. And I was trying to find a way how to do this more easier, more like seamless. I mean, of course, I can do P2P, but uh, it takes time. It takes uh, like a nerves, like sometimes people like stop communicating to you over everywhere. A lot of risk, like you don't uh, like a supported neither from a regulator or from, I mean, like from exchange. Uh, it's like, you know, wild, wild west, I would say like that. So, yes, and we start to explore, like explore the possibility to issue card officially from Visa or from MasterCard. This is actually how Embly started back in the days. Uh, and we officially like a co-brand for MasterCard and for Visa. So uh, it means what uh, we able to issue the card, which is actually like a fiat card. This card contains euro. That card contains not a Bitcoin, no USDT or whatever other currencies. It's a euro card. So uh, this is why it's a seamless process between two words, from crypto to the fiat. So what's happening when you obtain the card? First of all, you do the full KYC. You need to do KYC with your passport and do a video uh, authentication. Of course, you need to be like... Uh, Okay, person for that. You don't have to be like a like a political exposed person or like you have no like uh, any courts or whatever. It's funny thing, you know. Let me like jump one funny story. Um, back in the days, in the January 2022, it happened what a uh, very good user of us. He's like a very uh, famous guy uh, uh, in the crypto as well. So he went into the jail. And oh. he was our user. Okay. Uh, and uh, immediately, our uh, AML and KYC uh, department find, find that because it was everywhere in the news. Uh, and like, because he went to the jail, we have to stop, uh, stop working his card. And it was right. immediately like the same same moment because we cannot uh, be, because we report to all the authorities we report to the all the authorities of the company where we are in, in in Estonia and Czech Republic. So once that happened, we need to stop doing uh, service to that guy. All right. Do you know and who is who is it? <laughs> oh my god, I don't want to know who is him. <laughs> Uh, I, I, I give I give you I give you like a few highlights. He he was a, a wrestler. Uh, oh, and Andrew Tate, oh my God, that's interesting. Okay, that's, that's a good uh, client to show off. I think is yeah. is good. It's interesting. You say also politically exposed people are not allowed to. So if somebody goes yes, for the election, they, before you think they're unbanked, are the people in the small villages in the remote country, but they're unbanked are also the people in uh, the political uh, buildings uh, in the capital of the of the country. Okay. Yeah. So 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 yeah. Let me continue. So. Right. Once you uh, once you finish the KYC process, uh, once you approved uh, by our department to use the card, uh, first of all, you send the crypto to us. Uh, first of all, if the crypto is dirty, because we're doing all the uh, like uh, transaction screening. Uh, okay, this is a, this is a point. Sorry if I interrupt you. That is interesting because. Uh, Anti-money laundry in the financial world as the basis of a lot of uh, data collection and verification through the financial system. 
But uh, on the crypto side, uh, who can guarantee, who can uh, sign off uh, on the quality of uh, the crypto that is being deposited? Because we all know companies like China Analysis uh, that provide, uh, uh, you know, a sort of uh, yes. white list. Uh, of it. But uh, who is putting the stamp of approval? What government, uh, you know, authority does this? On what extent somebody is required to guarantee the quality of uh, you know you know you know it's i think it's still uh, wild wild west uh, because uh, all these companies like chain analysis or other companies i don't want to mention uh, they don't have any license so as well like you know actually like if we step back all the companies who do kyc process like online authorization they don't have any license they just uh, doing it as the commercial companies who have their own list connected to the all uh, all the list like from uh, worldwide like you know interpol uh, or, or yeah, other absolutely. like it, it, so it's based on reputation and uh, your uh, your take with the regulator is to say i did my best i went uh, to exactly. the best that i can exactly. find because there is no way to say hey there is a stamp that uh, clear me from responsibilities in a certain way, right? Exactly, exactly. So, so if you say like, hey, uh, this company helped me to check that uh, transaction and like finally they find out this transaction is not good. So the company who provide me that service, they will never be, hey, hey, hey it's just like our commercial use for you. So right. they don't, they never respond before any of the like a country or wherever authorities. So it's like only commercial use. I would say like oh. that. Okay, yeah, this so, is an interesting okay. aspect to know because in a way it's going to change in the future. I would say that course, the government like Singapore or more technologically advanced government will have their own office, which is going to use those tools to certify in a certain point, yes. okay, the, the quality of something or license company to do so, I guess. Exactly. I, 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 th I think uh, the licensing of this uh, thing is coming, is coming. All right. Yeah. So uh, once uh, you made this transaction and this transaction like uh, show in uh, in uh, Internet uh, on, uh, in, in Blockchain Explorer or wherever, uh, once it posted on uh, your address, uh, we process this crypto and put a fiat part into the, your card. And at that moment, all this money you can just easy to go use uh, for buying coffee or wherever. This is the one way. Second way, uh, it's called external authorization. This is what will be happening uh, with our MasterCard, which we are releasing from the 1st of April. So it means what you have your Bitcoin, Ethereum, or I don't know, like USDT, like uh, uh, it's, 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 it's uh, situated in your wallet. And it's uh, not liquidated at once. So, for example, like you send, uh, you, you have one one thousand in uh, Bitcoin on your wallet, and only when you go to buy coffee, a certain amount of Bitcoin is taken to pay for the coffee. Yeah, yeah it's very. Long. Mm. It is an interesting thing. I, I I had a card with uh, this friend of mine, and it was interesting because it was another moment that Bitcoin was raising value constantly, so I could see my balance in dollars. Then I spend one hundred dollar for something. I wait a little bit. I go check, and my balance still one thousand. Then I do another yeah. expense, and well, it's still one thousand. It was it was quite funny actually. I wrote an article about that long time ago. Oh and really? So this is yes, and this is a way to uh, to consume crypto directly without exactly. betting on an exchange rate on a certain day per se. To exactly. to have a, okay, and so this is uh, something that is different, right? So there is different regulation in this. Or it's just no, a there is no, there is no different solution. Uh, it's just a uh, technical solution. is uh, is like a long uh, long work with uh, issuer because uh, only few of issuers uh, allow that thing and ready to do that. Then you need okay. to get uh, s s uh, some kind of uh, um, authorization from the issuer so they uh, they understand you're ready to do that from your side. Okay, okay. so. Once, once you have your fiat, I don't know, spent or whatever, uh, it came the second, uh, like a second step. So if you spend a certain amount of funds uh, on your card because you spend it on a fiat, uh, second step of uh, checking can can be come back. So uh, if you spend more than 15,000 uh, 15, euros uh, per month, uh, our IML department will come to you and ask 
what is the source of the funds of this money? It's right. not our it's not our rule. It's a rule of the whole European uh, Union about money laundering and uh, uh, terrorist financing stuff. So right. when we uh, when we're sending uh, mails to our users asking, hey guys, please provide us a uh, utility bill where you're living or like where you got these funds, it's not because we want to do this. This is right. uh, because it's uh, uh, regulators asking for that. So it is the physical information that is sent to regulators. Users yes, and such sometimes, a... yeah, sometimes people uh, really like uh, hard react on that. Hey, like, should I send my uh, right. uh, private key to you or wherever? But uh, this is like, of course, of course, uh, this is not our uh, site of the request. This is, we got request, we need to report. Mm -hmm. If you want our company to uh, to work forward, Yes, we need to uh, to do all the rules and regulations which are on, on on the table. Absolutely. And I understand this. I had two bank accounts with HSBC in Hong Kong, and uh, they've been, uh, you know, misbehaving a little bit in the past. So now okay. are very, very strong under regulators' uh, control, so much that uh, the bank account became useless because every single time I tried to use the account, Ah, there are always those are company accounts, no private accounts. A lot of paper to send. So uh, if I need to move the money, that I need to plan like two months before to start sharing. Oh, the, the, oh the yes, things. yes, it happens because uh, you know, you know, like um, if we're not talking about only the card. So because we sometimes provide like OTC deals uh, using our license, so we like doing all the um, all the papers for the for the OTC deals, and right. uh, we know what banks require. And uh, sometimes it's like, you know, like a one week of work just to let uh, the bank understand how this money came from. So why like uh, somebody sending like, let's say like that, 100,000 uh, euros in USDT, we're receiving USDT and uh, uh, sending uh, euros to his bank account. And uh, the bank sent us request and asking, hey, guys, can you explain where is money from? So it's like a very big list of uh, of papers how to prove what this money are legal. They're not uh, from criminal proceeds or wherever. Right. So practically, um, for the honest uh, and well-behaved people, the process uh, and people that don't spend too much money every month because I guess uh, there are limits. Uh, I remember in the past was much more simple. Just uh, an email and a phone number uh, give up to one thousand yeah, so, dollars uh, uh, on those cards and. So, so uh, from 1st April, we start to do MasterCard, and MasterCard is more easy to work with. Uh, so for MasterCard, will be uh, 30K euros per month is uh, uh, available spending. Uh, okay. From this is 5K you can withdraw from ATM. Ah, okay, that's good. This is actually, in Italy, the post office give a... a a card rechargeable, we call it, that you can put the money in and consume it. It also has this 30,000 euro limit. I, so I, probably I guess it's, it's like a worldwide, uh, no, worldwide, like a, uh, on, in the Europe. Yeah, yes, exactly, exactly, exactly. Actually, this is okay uh, amount for people to, to spend. Of course, they cannot go and buy Lamborghini. Uh, you, you know, it's, it's, so, it's, so, it's, so, it's so funny thing, you know, like from the very beginning, like we have uh, crazy, crazy customers, uh, crazy like a corporate customer, Customers, because uh, from the other perspective, we uh, being like uh, co-branded to the Mastercard, we can offer uh, issuing cards for corporate users. Like for example, oh, okay. use wallet or wherever they can come to us. We do all the checks, all the documents, and provide them solution through our API. So uh, crazy stories like back in the days, like you know, like 2019, 2020, people coming to us, hey. Like I won't uh, have like one million dollar uh, mm -hmm. limit on my card. <laughs> yes, I won't go and buy Lamborghini with the card. <laughs> Get out. I'm yes, sorry. Yeah. <laughs> no, but I I do believe that this is also good because uh, in a certain point uh, there is a bridge, but uh, it's not like a bridge to transport a train a huge truck. It should be a bridge to walk over. You know, uh, and exactly. there is okay that there is a little bit of a mix between the two systems, but. Uh, in a limited manner, else it become really dangerous, uh, not only for, uh, I think, the matter of uh, anti-money laundry, okay, we see, but also for people to suddenly burn out all their crypto in one day to do silly purchases. Yes, exactly. And, so and still, still a lot of, a lot of, uh, a lot of uh, people trying to 
uh, to play with rules, uh, to play with uh, like with KYC, like providing like uh, yeah, fake uh, fake documents, fake, fake yeah. IDs, you know, like uh, <laughs> you know, well, like how, how is the I, 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 I have I, I have one funny thing uh, mm. for everyone who listens to me. Um, <clears throat> Whatever any 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 of the like exchanges, any of the wallet, any of the services, where you doing the authorization, video authorization, like uh, when you know, like you taking your phone, right? Right. And the mm-hmm. uh, phone only show you like a limited uh, a limited part, but yeah. the company who watching that, they got the full view. So right, right, right. a lot of people like are sitting naked. <laughs> Oh no! <laughs> oh my gosh! Okay, so yeah. always do the KYC. You you know we close down. Yes, yeah, yeah. So so okay. uh, do, do, then, like uh, when you then you take your phone and you see like uh, the KYC only show right. like only, uh, only the, the face, li- limited actually. part of the of the screen. No. Oh my it's gosh! Okay. The full screen. <laughs> I hope there is a you small. Can ima- you can imagine. <laughs> you can imagine. Sometimes it's like so, such a fun, such such a fun uh, uh, situation. Yes. <laughs> oh my God! Yeah, well, that, that's a, that's a good warning for everybody listening to us now. Yes, uh, please do your KYC over the phone with the clothes on yes, because yes, yes, you yes, will yes, be yes. regretting it. That they can blackmail you later. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So okay. So just uh, to to understand well, uh, let me recap a little bit uh, all the processes that there are. Okay, we're getting toward the end of this uh, beautiful conversation. So. In all the actors included in this process, there is the crypto planet uh, where uh, blockchain uh, or exchanges or wallet uh, where people has their funds. These funds are sent to the company, in this case, Embly, a dedicated address for the user. And Embly at this point uh, need to do a verification of the good source. So previously, uh, Embly did a verification on the user, a KYC, to make sure the person is not a criminal or there is no <laughs> information that uh, lead to think so. And uh, uh, then there is the AML, so anti-money laundry means that the money that arrived in deposited are now out of, uh, uh, I don't know, crime or whatever, so they are clean money. Or hack or whatever. Yeah, exactly. So, and this the certification is done by company that yet don't have a license given by some government because legislation is not there. So, it's uh, the duty of the company to do their best to guarantee that those money are clean. But uh, uh, is is a gray area to understand which is the extent that this thing has to be uh, proven in a certain way. At the at the moment, there are two ways. Some uh, the funds can remain in crypto, others can be converted directly in the card, and when they're spent, it either the funds in euro or dollars, whatever it is, or uh, the crypto are consumed and the goods is purchased. I guess uh, that uh, people can also withdraw crypto directly back to their wallets, uh, or uh, so there yes, is exactly. a little bit of in and out exactly. possibility. And and also, also, also uh, we, pro- like, we provide the service where people can uh, uh, liquidate crypto and get the funds into the IBAN and then use this IBAN to send to their other bank account. Okay, so it is anyway. So you, you pretty much you act like the bank a little bit. Like so a, you give me an account. A financial institution, I would say, like that. It's a financial institution. Okay. And, and this is an important part of all the crypto world. People now, the Bitcoin surpassed 60,000. 60, so there is yes. a lot of people there want to start spending them, I guess, so they can come to a company like yours and issue a card and then use this card to spend without buying a Lamborghini. <laughs> and uh, if if they get arrested like uh, Andrew Tate, their card is going to be dismissed <laughs> and blocked immediately. But if everything is okay for small expenses, that's something that works all right. Okay, and then thank, thank you, you for being in this uh, difficult position, but uh, I hope uh, it, it pays back uh, well enough to justify the, the hard work that you do. And... Uh, Thank you also for helping us uh, learn. Thank, thank you very much for invite. It was fun uh, and ni- ni- nice uh, communication. Right. Thank you very much then. And uh, for everybody else, uh, stay tuned and come back uh, for the next episode of Breaking Bank Europe. We are making one episode after the other. So thank you very much for listening to the next uh, occasion. Thanks for listening to Breaking Banks Europe, a Provoke Media podcast in cooperation with Fintech Stage. Don't forget to tweet us out, shout out, or post to the team at Breaking Banks EU on Twitter. If there's something or someone you'd like to hear on our cast, let us know. See you next week on Breaking Banks Europe.